So I'm not an expert, but I'm going to give some insight that I feel pretty confident about. Imagine for a second that you are a cigarette marketer. That's your job. Now, I grew up near one of the biggest cigarette plants in the world, and people that work in the cigarette industry are just like anybody else. They have the same issues, the same type of personality. Um, they're just in denial about the fact that they kill people for a living. And almost everybody's in denial about various things. So if you're a cigarette marketer and you go home at the end of the day and you sit down in your chair and maybe this thought starts to creep into your mind, you know, my job is just killing people for a living. So what are you going to do? Well, immediately you're going to turn on the TV, you're going to go and do some activity, maybe you're going to have a beer, maybe you're going to eat some junk food, anything to kind of cloud your thinking and distract you from the fact that you kill people for a living. You see, the cigarette marketing guy doesn't have to do any work to achieve higher consciousness. He's doing work to suppress higher consciousness. He's trying really hard to suppress a truer view of the world, a, a more transcendent view of reality. He's trying to suppress the fact that he kills people for a living. Rumi had a great quote that you don't need to seek love, you need to seek the ways in which you are stopping love from expressing itself. Love and higher consciousness are pretty similar concepts in my opinion. And the same quote applies. You don't need to seek higher consciousness. You just need to seek the ways in which you're desperately trying to stop higher consciousness from expressing itself. So getting back to cigarette marketing guy, his subconscious has to work constantly to distract himself from achieving higher consciousness. And it's exhausting for him. He's constantly having to do something to distract himself. Drink a beer, as I said, eat junk food, watch TV. It's a constant exhausting battle for his subconscious to keep higher consciousness suppressed, to keep from recognizing the reality of many things, including the fact that he kills people for a living. So one day, let's say, cigarette marketing guy comes home, sits down in his chair, and he just gives up on this constant battle of suppressing higher consciousness. Well, the first thing he's going to feel is just a sense of relaxation, I think, because for once he doesn't have to continually struggle to suppress things. And the cigarette marketing guy will probably think, wow, this is great. I finally get this sense of relaxation that I've been missing for so long. But unfortunately, then this thought is going to start percolating up into his conscious mind. I kill people for a living. And it's become, going to become more and more unpleasant for him. Now, if he really forces himself to stick with that and to, and to not do anything to suppress higher consciousness, maybe he follows any one of you know, many different systems for maintaining higher consciousness, and, and he doesn't deaden him, his consciousness back down again, this thought's going to become really, really unpleasant for him. In fact, if he were to achieve full consciousness of, of the reality of his situation, it would probably hit him the same as if he was strangling someone to death in front of their children, because the reality is that's what he does for a living. And if he were to become fully conscious of that, he'd probably go crazy or into a state of shock, and he'd be diagnosed with some mental disorder and given some drug to deaden his state of consciousness back down. Now, at this point, modern psychiatry would say that this person had a mental disorder, and needed to be cured, whereas, in my opinion, this person is actually more conscious than they've ever been in their life. They're just too conscious to be able to handle their new view of reality very well. And in my opinion, a lot of the great geniuses through history had this rapidly heightened state of consciousness, which caused them so often to have nervous breakdowns and be unable to deal with their, their improved or their expanded view of reality. So let's say, though, that with Cigarette Marketing Guy, things don't progress that quickly. Let's say he just becomes slightly more conscious, and it's just unpleasant, and it comes more and more from his subconscious into his conscious mind that, you know, what I do isn't really a good thing. So at that point, he's got two choices. One, he can repress the thought back down again, which almost everyone does, or he can try to deal with it. And he's going to be dealing with it at a partially subconscious level because he's not fully conscious of, of the thought yet. So maybe he's just on a subconscious level going to try to move into another line of work. Um, 
you know, if he becomes much more aware of what he does, uh, that he kills people for a living, then his conscious mind will more actively be able to seek a new line of work. So the more conscious he becomes of this thought, the more unpleasant it's going to be, but also the more rapid progress his conscious mind will be able to make towards a solution. Now let's say cigarette marketing guy does find a solution. He finds another job that's in a useful line of work and he gets past this issue. Now he's actually going to be able to maintain a slightly higher state of consciousness. He's not going to have to go home every night and drink a few beers to repress the thought that he kills people for a living. And this higher state of consciousness isn't just going to translate into understanding re the reality of his work. It's going to give him kind of an improved view of everything in his life because he's not so actively deadening his level of consciousness to deal with this one worst issue in his life. So the end result for Cigarette Marketing Guy is probably a good one. He's going to be able to relax a little bit more in life because his subconscious isn't working quite so hard to repress something. He's going to be able to see everything a little bit more clearly because he's not deadening his consciousness on this one issue. But it wasn't easy for him to get there. It involved a sacrifice at first. He might have had to leave his job, move to a different area, take a pay cut for a while. And in my opinion, this is basically why people repress higher consciousness. They don't want to pay the short-term consequence of facing all the inauthenticity in their life. And I think we all have enormous amounts of inauthenticity. The human mind is just a morass of denial. If almost anyone became fully conscious of, of everything, I, I think uh, most people would go into a state of shock or, or just be unable to function. So in my opinion, it's a long process to gradually untangle all of this denial and inauthenticity in order to allow a higher state of consciousness to maintain itself. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, don't want to go through that. They would rather just uh, hear some guru tell them, well, all you've got to do is meditate, uh, you know, take some drug. Well, if cigarette marketing guy meditates or takes some psychoactive drug, is it going to make him more conscious? Maybe for a short while, but then he's going to repress that back down again, and ultimately he's going to feel more unhappy because he has to do even more work to repress that uh, terrible thing that he doesn't want to face. In addition, some things like drugs have a toxic effect, which you know creates other negative uh, impacts in your life. If you're going to at least work towards uh, temporarily seeing a higher state of consciousness. There are a lot healthier ways to do it than through drugs, in my opinion. But ultimately, all of these methods for temporarily achieving a higher state of consciousness wear off because people haven't dealt with the underlying inauthenticities that they're trying to desperately repress. And that's the thing that so many of the popular gurus don't mention because they wouldn't be popular gurus if they were giving that difficult message to people. It's a lot like running up debt, in my opinion. Everyone would rather just continue heaping denial upon denial, uh, creating lower and lower states of consciousness rather than finally start facing these issues, working through them, and maintaining a foundation so that you can maintain a higher state of consciousness. So in my opinion, for example, when people feel negative emotions, we generally deal with that by blocking out our higher consciousness and remaining in denial about the ultimate cause of that negative emotion. I did a video on this in the past called What Anger, Fear, and Guilt Are Telling Us. It's a lot easier to take a short-term approach of blocking out higher consciousness rather than facing the negative emotion. So I'll just end by rephrasing Rumi again, that uh, everyone thinks higher consciousness is some thing out there that they've got to go and achieve, and they don't think of higher consciousness as being your innate nature. I mean, we all recognize that we're conscious. I don't think anyone denies that. Consciousness is people's innate nature, and they don't have to go out and achieve higher consciousness. They just have to stop trying to desperately repress it.